you're just gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna leave that one alone. I never get to my green place. I'm just gonna leave that one alone. I just have to watch the Eyes of Town on TV or something. You just have to keep pushing through. Yeah, that one. I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna even chance that one again. So, so now I don't even go out the country. Just because so many things happening and That's right. things are so crazy, I'm afraid I get out and I might not can get back in. Yeah. You know, so I do a lot of in in the United States. I do a lot of um, road trips. You know, so yeah. I'm so. sorry to interrupt, Jay. Do you have your laptop with you? No, it's right on. I'm just getting out. I'm looking at my computer. Is it not? Unplug the um I'm trying to plug it back in. Yeah. Just plug it back into your computer. It's like my lawyer's on here too. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to do with um Caitlin's as well. So what inspired you guys to do this? The work that I do um, is benefiting people where they live and how they impact the community okay. and how you know, the buildings and the way that they use their own units and their own space fit the culture. And my advisor is friends with um, a region son. Right. Mm -hmm. So she's like, up there this summer. Oh, <laughs> so okay. So that's why I'm back and forth. Ah, okay. Yes. This is going to have to get awful close to you. I'm sorry. We that's have to okay. Get that, that good sound quality. Okay. Do you want to I do. Um, you don't have to lean. Just okay. make yourself comfortable and we'll okay. bring it to you. Is that okay? That's fine. That should be okay. <laughs> and then we also have. Um, the consent forms for you to sign. Okay. So, this bottom one is for your records. This top one is for us. So, feel free to read, and I'll ask you if you have any questions after you finish reading it. Okay. I'm not a Windows person, so um, I'm not a computer person at all. <laughs> so I'm, no, gonna... I'm shocked. Young ladies <laughs> like y'all, I would no. say something like that, okay? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Mac user. Oh, okay. So I know enough to be dangerous on a Windows machine. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have any questions about no. any of these? Okay. This, this will be your copy in case you have any questions or any follow up.
Oh, here, I might need to sign all the rest of those. I just signed that one page. There should be a, two, there's two, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, I just need to connect. Give me my hotspot. Well, this better, is it okay? Yeah, thumper eighty four twenty six. Taking us on a short little tour of your home. Sure. You, you don't have to take us into any place you don't That's want okay. to. That's okay. It's all right. And any details that you absolutely love. Like the woodwork. The woodwork. That's the main thing. That's absolutely out of the way so we don't trip. what made me buy the house because it's so authentic um, I can actually put a nail and put something up and don't have to worry about splitting the wood just the um, oldness of the houses the structure pretty much is you know structured I mean I don't I've been here for since 94 and I haven't had any structural problems you know nothing falling nothing shifting the woodwork is what made me buy the house, though. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, gorgeous. Built ends and this is, Yeah, this is just another bedroom. The only thing about these houses, they didn't consider bathrooms, you know? So that's that big old bathroom in this house. Looks and like you redid yours. Yes, I had it redone too. Yeah, um, used to be a lot of the old type stuff, um, you know, the sink, no vanity, you know, nothing covering the bottom of the sink, real old. This is my little playroom. Sits up in a um, little futon, watch TV. My grandkids come over. This is kind of where they can hang out and everything. Um, and we have the kitchen. And the house is the same up and down okay. so just like mine is and i rent to my sister so and yes this had no again because of the older houses this wasn't here the cabinets was not here and it has the pantry which i kept because my brother's now wanted to push the pantry out and open up the kitchen and I was like, but that takes away the 
authenticity of the house, so I didn't want to do that. So I just had them just to put these little cabinets in, and you know, I could still have the modern things like they were smart enough. I wanted a dishwasher, but to have it here would have took up the whole sink. So they cut out a spot in the pantry and put a portable dishwasher so I could just pull it up and hook it to the sink and everything. Then, because it's wet out, we're not going to go out. But in the backyard, it's nice and modernized also. <clears throat> Out there. Yeah, my brothers and them built that deck, and yeah, so. That's peaceful. That must be peaceful out there when you go out there. Oh, yes. At night, it's lights all on the fence, around the deck, the steps of the deck, all in the ground. So it is. It's real nice. I can go out and make a fire at night, just be peace and quiet. If I could keep the neighbors in control, which I can't control, but, you know, for the pretty much part, most part of it, it's quiet within our vicinity and our block. It's like the next block over or the next one down. So that's basically it. Okay. So I see that you had a few wind chimes too. Oh, I love them. My sister hate them. <laughs> I love them. She's like, they just be making so much noise and I have one on the front that really went like bing, 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 bing when the weather would, you know, she don't really like them. So it blew off on the front and messed up and she was very happy, you know, cause there's not one on the front anymore. The woodwork and the oldness of the house really is what I, I liked about it. So, and the neighborhood, when I moved over here, like I said, 1994 was a really nice neighborhood. Most of the people were homeowners and they really kept the property up really, really nice. Everybody would get out, keep the yards nice, and then people started to decide, I'm going to move out of the neighborhood and moved out further into the better houses, and then they began to rent and never coming back to really check on their property. So it's kind of funny because we always say on this side of the street, you can tell who still owns the homes pretty much because most of the houses on this side is nice. The opposite side of the street, you can tell that those are all renters because they don't care about the property. And, you know, sometimes they don't do the um, grass like they should and, you know, just pick up around, you know, like us homeowners would. So I'm it's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a little air conditioner you have on uh -huh. or something? Can we turn that down? Sure. Because it's... Cause it's um, sorry. That's okay. It's okay. just noise. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of noise in the recording. Thank you. Possibly. I can turn it on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can possibly also hear, um, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Uh, see, you have that. A what? Little thing as high as it is. Yeah. It matches the, um, built in. Turn the arm to one of the I love this mirror you have. Thanks. <laughs> It's old. Yeah. Like everything around here. <laughs> Nothing's new. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a little introduction. Um, okay. And then we'll start with some of the questions, if that's okay. That's fine. Right. Hi, this is Joy Huntington, and I am at D uh, Diane Tharp's home at 2638 North 40th Street in Sherman Park, Milwaukee. Today, 
is July 12th, 2017, and I am doing an interview with Mrs. Starp at her residence. Also in the room is Bella Beware, Beware. Beware. Uh, helping with the recording. Um, this interview is sponsored by Professor Regent Sun and the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Building Landscapes Cultures Field School and will be stored at the Golda Mir Library Archives. At this time, could you please give a verbal consent to record and share the contents of this interview? Yes, you have my verbal consent. Thank you. Um, I want to start the interview with just some basic bio information and then we'll go into your experience here with your home and, and also the community. Okay. Um, so when did you actually move here into Sherman Park? 1994. 1994. And were you the only resident at that time in the home? No, I had a son at that time. Okay. Um, and what is your occupation? <clears throat> I'm an MRI tech. Um, and I know you said that your sister rents from you upstairs. Yes. And how long has she been? Since 1998. Okay. And um, did you... So, moving on from there, um, how did you come to find this house? Um, <clears throat> I was looking for an apartment to move from where I was previously living, and it was posted in the newspaper, so... Again, as I say, I rented before I actually purchased it. And um, I just applied and filled out the application, and the guy accepted it. So I basically found it in the newspaper. Okay. Wait, so you were looking at other places? Places, correct. And did you buy this, rent this house because of just the house or also the neighborhood as well? Because of the neighborhood as well, yes. And what did you know about the neighborhood before? Well, at that particular time, Sherman Park was really... Um, kind of booming, kind of like the place to really live, you know, really nice. It was very um, multicultural, you know, it was really a nice place to live. And the people really, uh, again, as I say, um, cared about the properties and, you know, kept up the property very well. So did you know anybody that was living here at the time? At that time, no. Um, and what was your first impression when you first came to this house to check it out. I was like, oh, I really like this. I hope I get it. <laughs> yeah. I noticed you said that the thing that you fell in love with was the woodwork. Correct. And was that something unique that you hadn't seen in other places you had? Used? Not in the condition of this. Most of the places that they rent mostly took, because they became rental property, they took away the natural woodwork and painted over it. So, yes, and it was still the natural, original woodwork that was in here from when the house was built in 1929. And when you moved here, moved in, was there anything that you thought, oh, I want to change this or I need to change this to fit my son and my lifestyle? Well, after I brought the house, yes. Like I say, in the kitchen, because it had the old-time sink and, you know, had the little well, y'all probably don't know about it, but it had the little skirts around the bottom of the sink and in the bathroom as well. Um, basically, that's about it. The light fixtures and stuff I changed also because, you know, we needed ceiling fans and different stuff like that. So that was basically it. I didn't do any other major changing in the house on the inside. Um, most of it was did on the outside with the patio, the deck and all that. So. I, as after we had toured, took a little tour of your house, I noticed that in the bathroom you told us was kind of your rec room. Yes, that's where I hang out at. <laughs> Has that always been your rec room? Your always. Room? Always? Yes, because it was just me and my son here. <clears throat> and then after he moved out, I, um, I kept it as just a room, you know, that he can hang out in, play his video games without having to be in the bedroom because, you know, in the... Back in our days, your bedroom was for sleeping. You didn't hang out in it. You know what I'm saying? And you either 
had like either a basement area or, you know, you had a rec room or something. So, yes, it always has been a room where we could just watch TV, play video games. So, yeah. Do you mind sharing with us the age of your son when you first moved here? When I first moved here, let's see, 94. He was born in 82, so he had to be like 12. Yeah. So how was the transition for you and also your son in becoming involved in the community, um, connected to your neighbors? Um, far as my son, I, well, he left home when he turned 18, so he didn't have a lot of involvement in the neighborhood. Um, me, I try to make it when I can, but my shift works so funny. I try to be involved with, um, they put on a lot of stuff with the church. Um, down there. I try to make it to all the meetings, you know, of what we're going to do with the neighborhood, participate in the cleanup things and stuff like that. So, yeah, I tried to do <clears throat> when I first brought the house, I used to tell my brother, my God, I can't believe these people don't want to keep this neighborhood. And order. he's like, you just do what you do. Everybody a pick up, you know, I was like, yeah, right. These people don't. But I can admit that some of the people, even though they are well renters, as they seen the rest of us homeowners keeping our property up and doing things, they was like, well, hey, you know, they doing such and such and they would do things. You would see them out planting flowers or, you know, trying to do um, keep the grass and stuff mowed. And everybody pretty much keeps all the trash up again because there's that big church down there. So, you know, people come through and park every day. They have a lot of um, training programs down there. So, you know, liable to go out tomorrow and it'd be a lot of trash in the front that none of us put out there. But, you know, we try to keep it picked up, you know, so that we can keep our neighborhood, you know, pretty much together. So and I tell people, I was like, you know, you think about it, you wouldn't throw that in your neighborhood. So don't throw it in mine. Okay. You know, keep it in your car till, you know, you get home. So. Okay. Um, and. Getting connected with the community, um, with cleanup and um, just the meetings, how else did you start to meet some of your neighbors? Was there anything else that you did? Like when we would be out in the yards, as I say, you know, doing stuff in the summertime, you know, you see your neighbors, you also say hi. And sometimes you just be sitting out doing yard work and you begin to talk with the neighbors and just introduce yourself, you know, and then you'd see each other and you'd be like, hi, hi. And then um, Tammy down the street, me and her has a, a mutual friend because she used to be a hairdresser. And my best girlfriend, she used to do her hair. So that's how I really met Tammy. And then she, her daughter used to work for the Sherman Park Association. And she came around one time and she was like, well, you know, they have these grants to help you with stuff around here, of keeping the property up, you know, because so many people wasn't financially able, this and that, and she was like, well, I'll do, we'll, we'll have the people come out and talk to you. And well, that, none of that panned out for me because I made too much money. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed for any of that. But it was a great program, which just boggles me. <clears throat> like the guy next door to me. Now he's a police officer that owns this building. And the guy who owned it before, he bought it from his father. It was just a nice house, you know, kept up very well. When he got it, he just became what they call your typical slumlord. Uh, you see it's painted red, white, and blue. The bricks are coming out. He does nothing to it. He did have some tenants in there, but they got smart and moved out. Um, he never keeps the grass done, so we have to call the city on him all the time, you know, because this is just a nuisance problem. Nobody's there, you know. If you're not going to take care of the property, sell it, get rid of it. Somebody might want to come in and, you know, build it back up because that's what a lot of people around here in these are buying these buildings back. And that's what they're doing to them. They rehabbing them, putting them back into, you know, the good restore that, you know, it was. So, yeah. But basically, everybody pretty much is into keeping their property together. So... How would you describe when you first moved here and how um, residents took care of their property versus now? It's yeah. Oh, it's a big change. Um, <clears throat> again, as I say, it's kind of funny because 
you can tell the people who own their home versus the ones who don't. Because most of the people who own their homes, you know, they try to keep the landscaping done and the flowers out, <clears throat> keep the property up. Those who don't own or that rent, you can tell the absent landlords, you know, because things are falling down on the houses that need to be fixed and they don't come and do any, you know, upgrade to it. If something, um, say a railing in the banister is missing, it stays missing. It's not like me, if I got one missing, oh, it's got to be put back in, you know, because it's, it's an eyesore. So you can basically tell who's the renters and who are the homeowners, you know. And it's becoming a lot of renters now versus the homeowners, you know. We have a lady who's across the street, been here longer than me, before, way before me. And she just, uh, <clears throat> she lives in her, she has a duplex. She stays there all by herself because she doesn't want to rent it out to anybody, you know. Which I can understand, you know, her family was there and once they moved away. And I can understand that because I would be the same way. If my sister ever moved, I wouldn't read either. I probably would sell the house, you know, and just move into an old people's home. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I would. I would I wouldn't rent I wouldn't rent it out because people don't a lot of these tenants I'm not they don't value the property as as, as much as we do, you know, because it's not theirs, you know. The only thing they'd be worried about is maybe not messing up too many things, you know, so they can get their security deposit back, you know. That's about the important thing. But um, I feel no matter where you live, whether you're a renter or a homeowner, you should take pride in your place that you live, you know, the resident that you live in, you know. So. When you first came here, was there another um, tenant upstairs? Yes, it was. Did you have a relationship with them? Uh, yes. I, 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 I knew her, you know, as far as her living upstairs. We introduced ourselves. She had two kids and everything. And I introduced her. We would see each other in passing. But um, we had no socializing that we actually did. And then I informed her that I was buying the house. And she was like, ah, does that mean I'm going to have to move? I was like, well, unfortunately, that means you're going to have to move. No. <laughs> yeah, so... It's kind of funny because I still see her at the hospital that I work at now. Yes. Um, and do you have a theory of why so many more people are renting as opposed to buying in the neighborhood? Not really. <clears throat> Not really. I would think, um, nope, I can't. I don't know why it's more renters. Than it is people actually buying. Um, I guess the job market you might want to say about people not being able to, but to me, just as well as nowadays to own as it is to rent. I find that to be true. And maybe because from when I was buying a house, you know, it was like a, a big thing to get your own your home because it was like, wow, I can't believe I own this, you know. You know, because we wasn't making money like they make now, you know, so it was like a big deal. Now that these, a lot of people can really actually afford it, really don't want it to because they rather rent. They may decide they don't want to stay in the state. A lot of people move from state to state, depending upon their jobs, you know, so I don't, I don't know. Some people's like I was when I first started out, I don't want the responsibility. You mentioned that tenants that live next door mm -hmm. wised up and moved out are do you hear stories about tenants calling um, the city about landlords absentee landlords no nope, because a lot of a lot of them don't even have the knowledge of um, what they can actually do you know uh, <clears throat> and it took it took me becoming as they say a landlord <clears throat> even though I rented my sister, I actually took the landlord tenant course just to know what was expected of me. Even though she's my sister, there's still expectations of me as being a landlord to keep her property. So I didn't, when I had new carpet put in, I just didn't do my apartment because it was, I did the whole house because I can't just sell the lower level, you know, anything I do to my house, I do to her house, you know, her apartment. Um, I don't think a lot of these people know their rights as being tenants. 
you know, um, if something is wrong, it needs to be fixed. And I guess some people just don't want to, as they say, make waves, you know, but that I don't see because I'm not going to stay anywhere, whether I'm the owner or not. And there's a problem with the plumbing or the water's running all night, drip, drip, you know, just not. And then again, as a tenant, that's your right. That's what you pay for, you know, so. But I think a lot of people don't know their rights as a tenant, you know. Do you have hope with um, different people buying up these empty homes that the neighborhood would be more beautified and rehabbed? I truly do. I hope it gets back to how it was. Yes, or at least close to it. You know, especially the buildings. This is some very good architectural buildings. <clears throat> and um, I don't understand, even though people don't live here anymore and they're renting them out, I, I've never understood why they don't want to keep the property up, you know, because these are some nice houses over here. The woodwork in some of these places is just like psh, simply gorgeous, you know. And like I say, it's so authentic that you don't find a lot of, you know, it's just like, you know, if I want to do, redo the heat, I can't even get my little heat fits because they don't even make them anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I have to keep them done up, you know, um, myself, keep them, you know, paint them every now and then when they're getting, you know, a little rusty look, looking and everything. But <clears throat> I would hope that, you know, people would buy the houses, would want to restore them back to the natural, you know, yeah, to bring the community back up. It's not a bad community. You know. Have you known any of um, the residents whose homes have been foreclosed on? No. Can't tell you any ones that, nope, don't know any ones that has been foreclosed on. And how does it make you feel when you drive, um, when you go up and down uh, the street and you see homes that are boarded up next to homes that are... We well, can tell, feel really bad because, you know, all that affects your property, you know. I mean, it, it affects everything. The crime rate affects, you know, like your insurances and everything. So that affects it. And, you know, that's just like me. I'm not saying my house is the greatest, but I think my I have a nice house and I keep it pretty well together. And then look what I'm next door to. You know what I'm saying? The bricks about to fall down, you know. So it's, it's, it's an eyesore. You know, even though everybody would look and be like, wow, that's a nice house. And they also be like, look at the house next door. And they will remember that house next door before they remember my house. It's just, just, you know, part of the nature, you know, of people. So yeah, I think it's really sad, you know, that people take care and the houses are boarded up. And again, as I say, Tamara's daughter, when she did work for, there's an association in the Sherman Park neighborhood and not just like this block or that block. I mean, it, it's a whole vicinity and they have a lot of resources that they do to help these people with these houses. Now, I don't get why they don't reach out and, 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 and it is publicized. I mean, they come through, they walk door to door, putting out flyers, letting you know there's meetings, letting you know that, hey, um, this year we have what they call curbside, you know, you want to do your landscaping or whatever, you know, hey, if you put in so much money, we'll match so much money, you know, who could beat that? I, mean, I could have got some of that, no, <laughs> because, you know, I put a lot of money in my landscaping, you know, and not to say just to get it back, but just because, but I, I don't get the fact that, you know, they're willing to help you beautify your property and these people aren't taking advantage of it. You know, so that's just money sitting wherever it is or the grants or whatever they do with them, you know. So, and I just don't get it. But then again, that's a lot with the absentee landlords because they're not here. Some of them don't even live in the state, you know. They're absentee, so they don't. They don't care as long as they're getting their rent money, which is pitiful. You um, just mentioned that you've done a lot of work on your landscape. Mm -hmm. So I just want to delve back into that a little deeper. Okay. Did you do that yourself or was it your brothers? My brothers, bless they soul, they older now, but they were a great help. Um, <clears throat> it's, I have a funny story. I have four brothers. I have one that's mentally retarded, so he can't, 
he can he can do some things, but he's not mentally. My other brothers are very handy. Well, one of them's retired. One's still working. He's a cop, both of the other two, but they're older. Anyway, <clears throat> I had this dream when I brought this house. I had the old-fashioned doors on the outside, so I wanted to get the nice security doors and everything, and I wanted to change this and that. So we sat down and made a list of the things we wanted to do over the years to change in the house, to bring it up. Knock on wood, and thank God. We have accomplished everything that we wanted to do to bring out the house. A um, couple of years ago I had, and that was another thing, like I say about these programs, that I, someone informed me of, and like all the windows in the house, we used to have the older windows that was all wood. Well, you know, they done, that shifted and, you know, you would get air, this and there. So I had the blower test and everything done and I wanted new windows. Well, there's a program that was in the Sherman Park neighborhood that they would, <clears throat> if you qualified, they would come out, redo the windows and you had to pay a certain price per window. And I think um, for the installation. Again, I didn't qualify for that. But then I wasn't selfish either because like the lady next door, I passed the information on to her and told her about it. And she was like, really? I was like, yeah. She was like, well, I don't know. I was like, you won't know unless you call. So she called and she was able to get her windows in, you know, and not pay. Unfortunately, me on the other hand, for these, because there's so many windows in these houses, it was 40 windows. So you're talking $20,000. It cost me to put windows from the top to the bottom in here, you know, and she does, she has about as many as I do, but because with the grants and everything and they was helping out, I never asked her what she paid, but I know my sister stays on 44th, 44th street and they helped her out and she did, she was not out of, not even a quarter of what I was. So that was a good thing. And I had told her, and she was like, really? I was like, yeah. She was like, I probably, I was like, yeah, you would. You just, you have to see what you, you know, qualified for. And there are so many things that they help the people do around here to keep this neighborhood up. And I just don't get it why they don't, you know, take advantage of it. Whether you are a landlord or whether your absent landlord or, you know, your tenants, if your tenants get these ladders and they're informing you, you know, you would think, hey, maybe I might want to do. But a lot of people are just into collecting the rent and that's it, which is pitiful because these are some beautiful houses. If you go into some of these houses and look at this woodwork and the different things that the people have did over the years to modernize them, you'd be like, wow, it has the old character of the house with the new amenities which is kind of you know the best of both worlds which is which is nice you know yeah so I don't know <clears throat> I hope they would take the time and try to you know bring the neighborhood at least partially back to you know what it was because it's, it's a it's a nice neighborhood like I say, most of the people that still live here are homeowners and have been here for years, you know, and they still take pride in, in the neighborhood because they knew what it once was and everybody has the ultimate feeling that, hey, if we stay here and we keep pushing, pushing, maybe we can get it at least back to what it was, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and it's kind of, I think it's sad when I see them like a couple of houses over down here, uh, I think on the next block where they tore the houses down and then rebuilt these newer little houses. And it they cute, don't get me wrong, but they just they just look funny in this neighborhood because you're so used to seeing, you know, these big old wompy duplexes, you know, so yeah. Um, what would you say is your favorite space on your property to be? What do you enjoy doing there? Oh, that's kind of hard. I love my den. That's because I get to play video games. I got everything in that little room that I need. I also like my patio in the summer because um, I'm a little bit of, I have no sense of, sense of astrology, but I do like to watch the stars. So I have telescopes. So I work second shift. When I get off at night, I come home. And I put my telescope out 
and I watch the stars and just relax out there. It's kind of nice because, you know, my brothers are amazing. I have a whole surround sound system in the backyard. So that's out there all year, you know, they waterproof speakers. So I could turn the music down just like having a little radio and I could sit out there in my nice comfort and listen to the waterfall that's out there and just relax, you know. So in the summer, that's my favorite place. I sit out there all the way until it snows. When I have to shovel the snow off the deck, that's the end of it. I have my nice little blankets. I sit out there, even when it's cold, I usually get to sit out there till December all year because I have patio heaters and I have fire pits. So I can sit out there, you know, till it's super, super cold and just sit out there and do whatever it is I want. I have lights where I can sit out there. I can play cards. I can read. I got my little hammock. I can take naps. I don't do those anymore because the neighborhood's getting a little bit bad, even though I have the privacy fences. But, you know, I used to just sleep, sleep out there, you know. Sometime I wake up, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I was like, where do you think you live at? Get in the house. No. <laughs> but it's, it was just be just that comfortable. So those are my favorite two rooms or my favorite two spots on the whole property. Did your yeah. sister ever invade your back yard space? Mm, nah. She comes out sometimes, but not, not often. No, not often at all. She just, we just got her to do yard work. <laughs> well, that's only because I was gone <clears throat> last year for um, an extended vacation. I was gone like three weeks and she couldn't find anybody to mow the grass and it was too long. And she was like, she get back here and this grass ain't mowed, she'll have a heart attack. So she finally got out there. I was like, you've been living here since 1998. And you mowed the grass, finally. I didn't even know she knew how to start the lawnmower. I was like, oh, so now you can do a little yard work. Which she usually helps me, but her back. And she would rake and she would be off from work for two weeks. So I tell her, don't do any yard work. I got this. So I go out, I mow, I edge, I trim it. I do my yard work myself. And it's kind of funny because the people at church be like, man. I tell my sister, I said, we're getting older now, so... Used to could do it in the morning before I went to work. Well, I'm either mowing one day and edge it the next. They both ain't getting done in the same day, unless it's the weekend and I can take my breaks <laughs> to get it done. But I do my yard myself, and it's kind of funny because the guys will come by and be walking. They'd be like, man, y'all really can do that, huh? Well, yeah, sometimes you have to learn to do things yourself, and I'm, I'm glad I did. My brothers, like I say, are godsends. And when they got ready to do work around here, I was involved. I didn't do anything, really, technically as far as mechanically. But, like, when they got ready to build the deck, my brother took me to the hardware store. Never forget this. And we spent, like, six hours in there. And I'm thinking we're going to get the wood that day. No. He was showing me how to put the planks this way, turn them that way, make sure they straight, not wobbled, no splinters, all this and that, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, I done learned all this. Now we're going to get the wood. And, well, no. The day they got ready to do the deck and put it up, he sent me back by myself to get all those boards. I had to pick each board. And whichever one I brought back that wasn't right, he made me take back. Yeah, which was which which was good. So when they got ready to do my sister's deck and her fence, he was like, OK, I don't have time to go get the stuff. He was like, well, you got your truck and your trailer. You go get it. So I, I was which was good. I was able to help her do something that they helped me do. I was able to go pick out her fence and her wood and stuff, you know, where they didn't have to. You know, free labor. Hey, that's the least I, I could do. You know, I mean, they, they they built that whole deck. They did all that work and it didn't cost me nothing but the material. And, you know, them a couple of beers afterwards, but couldn't get it done any cheaper. You know, so they have been a godsend. Have you really. Done, um, have they done or have you done anything in the basement or the attic? The attic has been installated, but the attic is just like it originally was. And our thing was... That was going to be our last project. We were going to make it into rafters, um, leave the original loft look to it. Never did it because I don't even go up there, really. <laughs> and the basement is built strictly for our storage area because we don't have a lot of 
closet spaces in the rooms because the closets here were small. You know, people didn't have a lot of clothes. Well, I got fortunate enough because of my brothers and they built me an eight by 10 room down there and they built my sister eight by 10 room closet where we can store our clothes and our shoes and everything. So that was the only thing they did down there. Other than that, it's all for storage. You know, we both got our sides for our washers and dryers and the shelves to store any additional stuff down there that we need. So, yeah. I, I noticed that you have some hanging plants. And They're not for real. <laughs> <laughs> because when I first moved here, I had all live plants. But over the years, I noticed I would have to replace them. The vines and stuff would grow really nice. But because in the wintertime, because the buildings are so tall, I don't get as much sunlight. So I was replacing them all the time because they wouldn't live as long. So I was like, okay, I'm tired of replacing these plants. So I did one better. I have them nice. And see, when I want them to get a little full, I just go back to the store and buy some more and put it in there. And they'd be like, wow, these plants are really growing. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that is why I don't have any live plants. All my live plants are outside now. This year, because I had surgery um, in May, so I just actually went back to work like a week ago. But um, in my backyard, y'all just saw the deck, but on the fence, if you notice, on the fence I have lights and it's these like green bags. Those were all full of flowers. And um, I have like 20 pots outside. All those would be full of flowers. It would be nice in the summer. But since I didn't, I was sick this year, I didn't have a chance to do any, you know, flowering. So all the landscaping is still out there nicely, but nothing in the pots. So, yeah. And how did you approach personalizing your space, your home for you and your son when you moved here? How? Huh? It's kind of hard to say. I don't know. Just over the years, you know, you buy things and they kind of, all blend together, you know what I'm saying? It just, um, since I've been here, this is a funny thing to say. Um, <clears throat> I moved here in 1994. I had different furniture, which was like a, I had a, a couch and a love seat, you know. And then I had been saying, oh, I want some new furniture. So I went when Evans was in business and I wanted this sectional built and I told him I wanted it to go from one wall to the other. So the guy was like, well, measure the space and we can build it whatever length you want. He's like, now, take in consideration, you might want end tables or whatever. So I took the measurements to the company and they actually built this sectional for me. What no one ever told me was when you're buying furniture in these older houses, the size of the door for it to get through the door. So I spent all this money to have this built. And they got it in. But it was a tight fit, you know, so that was a good lesson learned. <clears throat> but um, as far as just buying things, you know, you see things you like, you be like, oh, that is cute. Oh, that is cute. And I used to have a real fetish for brass. I had a lot of brass pieces, but now that I got older, you know, I put that stuff in a box and put it in the basement because I ain't got time to be cleaning. <laughs> no, I ain't got time to be polishing that, you know, which I don't. But um. You just see things and you like, you'd be like, oh, that'd be cute in such and such a spot in the house. And you just get it. I don't think there's no rhyme or reason of, you know, how you want things. So just wanted some good furniture, sturdy, that would last and, you know, picking out little things. So they laugh at me about my dining room table being set. My girlfriend's like, do you set that? It's, but it stays that way all the time. You know, it's just, it just was a famish of mine for years. I also thought it was just cute when everybody would set the table for dinner, Thanksgiving, Christmas. No other time would it be set. So I was like, well, I'm going to set mine and leave it. And that's just what I did. It's more work. But then we got the dishwasher to wash the dishes, so that's okay. No. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, just finding things and you'd be like, oh, that would be cute there. Hmm, get it and be like, Tch. and it just kind of all comes together. Yeah, I didn't have a fantastic decorator or, you know, none of that. You know, it's just picking little things I saw and be like, hmm, hmm. So, yeah. It looks good, though. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's okay. 
it's home and that's that's the main thing i um it's home i think home should be home not a you know mausoleum you know where you can't you have spaces you don't go into or use they just to look at you know i think if you have a home you should be able to use any room and hang out anywhere and you know feel nice and comfortable because that's what home is you know and it's tailored to you you know for your personal needs and what you like and you know don't like and what you feel comfortable with so yeah do you um ever eat in the dining room here? all the time you see okay. you get it's, it's it's funny you ask that because when when i was younger it was just a thing you know, but then I got older, you know, um, I'm quite sure you young ladies have dreams of the kind of house you want and the things you want. You know what I'm saying? And then you start to strive and get these things. And as I got older, I was like, OK, we just had this conversation, me and my girlfriend. I was like, you know, we have all this stuff we've brought to have nice things from when we had these nice dinners and this and that. And then you only use them when you had them nice dinner. So. <clears throat> I go to church a lot. So on Sundays after church, I'll cook a nice dinner and my aunt and my cousins and them come over who's like 80 something and we sit down in the dining room and we eat at the dining room table. They'd be like, well, you could just give us a paper plate. I was like, well, you know, I eat out of paper plate almost every day because it's just quick. And I was like, okay, I've kind of gotten out that habit. So if I have breakfast in the morning, I get a regular plate you know, and usually if I eat dinner, you know, you have a salad or a steak and a potato. You just put it all on one plate. No, no, I don't do that anymore. I use the bowl for the salad. You know what I'm saying? And put me a piece of bread. I, I have all these things. Why not use them? You know, and I've come to that now. So, yes, I do eat at that table regularly. So when you're by yourself as well? As well, yes. I'll sit in there and have me a little din-din. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, because you have all these things and you 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 just have them. And if you don't use them, they just why accumulate things and you don't use them, you know, and we have a lot of people have a tendency to do that. They want these nice things and get all this thing and then you get it and you just never really you just have stuff, you know, you never use it. So I try to use all of it. I sleep in every bedroom because no one's here but me. I'll sleep in that room one day. I'll sleep in that room one day. I'll sleep in the futon. I'll let it down into a bed like it is now. And I'll sleep back there one night, you know. Everybody's like, you just be mad. That's okay. I, I just clean up whatever room. You know what I'm saying? But I have all this house. Now, this living room barely gets used. I come in here and sit. I clean. I turn the TV on to make sure it's still working, though. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it's... It's a big room when I have a company, you know, we, uh, you know, come in here because it's big and a lot of people can come. But I barely use the living room. I barely use the dining room. They just sit there. I use the rest of the house. I pretty much use. Do you entertain a bit? Not as much as I used to. I used to entertain a lot. Not anymore. You know. <laughs> me, me and my friends, we, we try to get together, you know, and, you know, do dinner or something. <clears throat> um, I guess because we don't go out to the bars and, you know, hang out anymore. So we do a lot of homebody things. Um, it's kind of funny. My granddaughters and them laugh because they think it's really funny. I was like, oh, you know, the way the deck sits, it's right up against the garage. And the back room from the den, you can see. And what I do is um, I take and I, um, I have a movie projector. So I'll put a sheet up by the thing and operate it from inside the house and we can sit in the backyard and like watch movies. So sometimes we might have movie night out there with my granddaughters and some of their friends and we pop popcorn and, you know, different things like that. Um, I try to do more things at home now. You know, than I used to, I don't, I used to have parties once a year. Every year I would have a big party with all my family, co-workers and friends. That was a big thing. We used to have to rent these porty toilets. And, you know, we have like at least 100 people coming back and forth. And 
all different different ethnic groups so everybody would bring whatever you know of their race or whatever and drink or whatever and we would just sit out on a Saturday all day and finish up on a Sunday and have this big party every year and they still talk about it now I have one friend who's still mad at me now because I don't have them anymore he was like I looked forward to that for years but you know like I told him oh, I don't just don't feel like it now I have no reason not to have one you know because everybody brought um when it came time to clean up everybody cleaned up the guys would stay at the tables, break the tables down and this and that because I would rent tables, you know, everything. I didn't have to really do anything. It just was here at my house. And I just I just decided I didn't want to do it anymore, you know, and everybody's kind of upset. So I was like, I tell the kids now, y'all young, y'all take over. Have it at y'all house. Oh, no, I don't want all them people. Well, what makes you think I want them at my house, you know? It's like, but the biggest thing about that was the porty toilet. Oh, when I told everybody I rented porty toilets, they was like, oh, I'm not going to use that. Well, I was like, well, me and my sister only have one bathroom. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's a lot of people on the bathroom. When they brought the porty toilets, it was hilarious. No one ever came in the house. They was like, man, I can't believe these things are so clean and fresh. And, you know, I don't know. I guess they was used to being out at the, you know parks and everything and they they was like man it's got a light in there and it's it's so fresh and so no one never even came in in the house it was so I thought it was hilarious it's like but at first nobody especially my mother she was the main one I'm using that thing it's like yeah okay she went there she's like oh this is really clean it was it was hilarious so nice little parties but I don't do a lot of entertaining anymore so, nope uh, would the people from the neighborhood come neighborhood would come those that I knew yes mm-hmm most of them have moved out, out now. Um, I only know like the lady stays next door, lady across the street to her. I only know like five people who are originally, originally still here that was here, that's been here for years. Everybody else basically is new. And also, of course, quick question about the porta pot toilets. Mm -hmm. Where did you actually put those? In the backyard. Um, well, you didn't see it because we didn't go out to get a full look at the yard. But I have um, on this whole, the whole length of the house on this side is all part of my yard. So I could put them, it's a back, I have a back brick patio back there that has like my barbecue grills and stuff. And I would just have them sit them on there. They actually lift them up over the fence and put them in the yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they would sit back there on the little brick patio. Yep. Question about your grandchildren when they come over. <laughs> what about those little girls? Well, they ain't so little, but. Do they feel as though they own the house when they come? Oh, yes, ma'am. They feel they can do anything they want if they want to come in and whatever they want to eat. And they're 14 and 10. So now they, 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 they rule the house. Go in. Well, they don't want to watch the same thing on TV, so they'll go to different rooms and turn the TV on because there's cable in all the rooms, so they get to watch it. Or if the one wants to play, the Wii is up here, and the PlayStation's in the den, so whichever game they want to play, you know. So, yeah, they think they live here. They really do. Mm -hmm. Do they live far from here? Uh, no, they stay on St. Um, <clears throat> Paul, St. Paul, 20... No, 35th and St. Paul. So, no, they don't stay far from me at all. Yeah. Yeah, so they think they own the house when they come over. This is Granny's house. So, how often do they come over? Well, not as often now because they're older now. They don't have time for me. But up until three years ago, I kept them every weekend <clears throat> from when they were babies. Yes, because their parents worked on the weekend to keep from having to pay daycare. Grandma would keep them every weekend because I would be off on the weekends, except for when I'm on call. I would keep them every weekend. So I had them probably for the first nine years of their life. Um, moving on to possibly the future. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would ever move out of Sherman Park in this house? No. Nope. Unless I get too old to keep it maintained then yes, <clears throat> but long as I'm able to keep up the yard work and everything, 
I wouldn't move out. I, I really like the neighborhood, I, and I love my house, you know, so, yeah. Can't control what's out there, so, you know, but, yeah, I don't think I would ever move. Mrs. Robinson mentioned um, when I interviewed her guest text mm -hmm. yesterday um, about the police being here and their presence here and her thoughts of how the police could be in the community could be more involved with each other um, in the sense of if everybody was calling the police then nobody was um, picked out. Correct, and that that's in any neighborhood um, that don't want you to know, you know, and, and, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, and I know my brother's a police officer, and they say, you know, you call this anonymous, that's bull. <clears throat> they know who's calling, and if there's something really, really bad, they'll come straight to your house, so I don't know how that is uh, anonymous, you know, um, <clears throat> and people are so afraid of retaliation. They see things going on. I won't say a word. But then <clears throat> you hear him complain. Well, blah, 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 blah. You know, but I mean, you know, we all have to work together. You know, that's what a community is. I don't know what their understanding is, but as I was coming up and growing up, that's what a community was. Everybody worked together for a common goal. And if you can't get the people to do it, then, you know, it's like fighting a losing battle. So... Yeah, most of these people aren't going to call because they probably got a lot of skeletons in their closet themselves and, you know, which is bad, you know. But, I mean, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. If you see something that's going on, just like Tammy was saying, um, the one neighbor down the street said um, they robbed somebody in front of Tammy's house like a week or so ago at gunpoint, you know. And um, nobody, I'm quite sure, didn't see us anything, and that's not true. Because we work different shifts around here, you know. Uh, there's a number of us who work second shift. Like, I get off at 1030 at night, and even though I can come, I park in the garage. I can come just straight and go in the garage, but I don't. I come down the block to see, you know, like, what's happening. And then I go park in the garage, you know. Um, anything, I see strange people, you know. Any cars or anything that's not of norm, you know. It's like, oh, that car's been there shouldn't be there, you know, and they kind of on the wrong side of the street, and, you know, certain nights you have to park on different, you know, just little things like that, you know, as us being neighbors, we have to kind of look out for each other. If we don't, or, you know, something looks suspicious, and we don't say anything, or, you know, inquire about it, nothing's going to be done, you know, and then you find people who they feel they can come in your neighborhood and do anything, so they'd be like, well, let's just go over there, you know, and just, you know, there's not a lot of kids in this neighborhood. It never has been since I've been here. There's probably more now than there was when our kids, us individuals who's been here, were, were kids, you know. And we looked out for each other. You didn't do anything, and nobody didn't tell it, you know, and everything. And the kids used to be like, ah, oh, these neighbors are so nosy. I'm so glad they are, you know, because, you know, it's it's good that somebody looks out. But you don't have that now. People don't. Everybody's off into their own thing, you know. I still say, see, I'm one of them older people. If we kind of get back to some of the basic things of life, just the simple things, you know, common courtesy, respect, you know, some of those little basic things, we can, we can accomplish a lot more, you know. Not who's got the fastest computer, you know, or who's got the slickest car or, you know, whose house is the best, just the basic things, you know, being courteous to people, um, saying hi, looking out for your neighbors, you know, different things. I, um, I still remember when I was younger and we had elder people in the neighborhood, you know, you would mow their grass for them, you know, now everybody is, and I can understand you want, you know, everybody wants to make money or whatever, but you know, it's not always about that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just about the the thing to say, mm, I feel good because, you know, I did something nice for someone, you know, but this is a whole totally different world. So <sighs> then from what I know it to, to be, and I say that because at work, I say a lot of that. I work with a lot of 20 something year olds and they've been to school and got their degrees and it's like, whew, 
now they're there, it's like, well, you know, you have to actually work. You know, this job isn't just because you got a degree, you know, and then it was like, so we have to do a lot of lifting of the patients, this and that. So I had a big old hernia that they had to fix from 28 years of lifting patients. So when I went back to work, it was like, ha, ah, what kind of restrictions are you on? I was like, none. The doctor put me on, but I put myself on restrictions. So I was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you know, for 28 years, I have lift patients. I said, I come in here. Now y'all come in here every day. Tell me how y'all went to the gym and pumped up and, you know, all this before you get to work. And then you want to lift the patient's feet over. I'm twice y'all age. I'm lifting the feet from now on. Okay, I put my own self on restrictions. They was like, I can't believe this. I was like, so what are y'all going to do? I mean, it's, it's nothing you guys can do, you know. Slide the patient over, you know. I was like, you've got to earn your way. You got to, f for me, feeling a sense of accomplishment, whatever it may be. May it be putting them flowers out there and watching them grow. It's like, wow, I did that. You know what I'm saying? Um, same thing at work. You know, a sense of accomplishment, feeling, hey, I went in today, I did my job, I worked real good and, you know, did that little teamwork and we got all this did, you know, because our job is not easy, you know. So, you know, when you when you can come out with that satisfaction, it's a good thing. And people just. I find they go through life. Like a clockwork thing, you know, because this is what is expected. This is what you do, you know, and, you know, it's just. It's just a totally different world from what I'm used to. I'm telling you totally. And then I find myself at work. I'll be like, okay, Diane, these are not your children. Okay. Shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Okay. <laughs> you know, because you find yourself doing that and you tell them, but it's kind of nice though, because I have a lot of them be like, wow, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing a lot of things I do now because when they first come there every day, they would go to the cafeteria and get lunch. I was like, so you're working to eat, huh? Well, what do you mean? I said, you go down there and you buy a salad for $5 every day. You know, $5, you can buy a head of lettuce, some carrots, cucumbers that you, you know what I'm saying? And you can have lunch probably for five days, you know? So it's kind of funny now because they get into it. And the one girl was like, I don't know how to cook. I was like, see, that's what kind of gets me. Y'all can get on these cell phones and search for anything. But you can't get on a search for recipe i say buy you a crock pot and you can cook anything you want and she it's so funny now because they become hey i tried such and such let me now they give me recipes of you know and it's 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 just hilarious you know and it was like man you know if you hadn't convinced me to start cooking and bringing lunch just think of the money i would be out i was like yeah like even the guys they eat breakfast lunch and dinner out every day do you know how much that's called? you working to eat basically you know you can scramble some eggs, I'm quite sure. Well, I tell you, if you didn't when you was at home with your parents, now it's the time to learn. My son, on the other hand, is kind of funny because him and his girlfriend with the kids, he did all the cooking, you know, because I taught him how to cook. I was like, these girls may not know how to cook and you don't want everything microwave. So you need to know. And he did a lot of the cooking, which was a good thing because he do know how to cook and clean house, you know. Just because you're a boy don't exclude you from those things, okay? Because if you get your own place, who's going to do it? Mom's not coming over and clean your crib, okay? So you need to know these things, and that's what they need to do. They need to know the basic, which is kind of funny because these kids are so smart on these computers. And with all this internet and different stuff, and can't do the basic things, you know, that's required. Where did we go wrong? You know what I'm saying? You know, you should have had those basics. Now you got to go back to get them. And regardless of how technology get, you pull a plug, then what you going to do? That was a lesson we learned with doing our grandkids. As I got grandkids, we would take them once a month on a camping trip. No electronics. No nothing. We would take a radio, maybe to listen to music with batteries. No other electronics. No no nothing. And um, we used to have friends that would come with us that would actually get mad because they would bring their kids and their electronics to keep them busy. And it's like, well, you know, you're going to have to leave the campground because that's not the rules. Well, what do you mean? He needs something to do. Well, we have bocce ball, ladder ball. 
Bing Bag Toss, uh, Badminton. I have all these games. Jump ropes. We have a volleyball in the net. What do you mean? He should play. That's what he should do. Well, you know, I did. Well, she she left. She was upset, but I didn't care. They went. We took them out there for them to learn basics. You got to cook over fire. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a stove or a microwave to nuke anything. You know, um, group activities. Uh, if we make breakfast in the morning, everybody had their thing to do. Put a couple of people on making the bacon, this and that. You know, teaching these kids, you know, how to start a fire and, you know, this and that. At night, we do the s'mores and let them tell a story. You know, some of the basic things. <laughs> it was kind of funny. My great nephew. We took him out there when he was like a little baby, six months or so. So he had been going for years. So <laughs> when it was snow, he knew he couldn't go. So like in March, he was like, well, there's no more snow. Why we can't go camping? Well, it's cold in March. You know, you can't go camping till May, you know, till it's above four. But it took him until he was like five years old to understand that, you know, just because it's not snow. Because that's what he was thinking. If it's snow on the ground, we can't go camping. If it's no snow, we can go camping. But it took him a while to figure out the temperature-wise. You know, so he got with that. So, But, I mean, those kids love that. And they don't mind giving up them Nintendos and, you know, them tablets to go out there for two days of nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. I say we need to get back to some of the basics, you know. Make everything kind of simple. Anything that I've missed? Did you notice? Um, I was going to ask about the shelf you have blocking your, <laughs> your door. Okay. How did I get that? My brother. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have a little cabinet that I brought um, to put um, CDs and DVs and everything in. Well, my brother was like, well, you never use that door anyway because it leads to the bedroom. I was like, yeah. He was like, so I'm going to build a shelf. And actually, it sits on nothing. It just sits in the door frame. And he built it and put it there. It just fits into that door frame. So that's that, it. So that's, you just don't want that door open. Yeah, I I, well, I never used it anyway. So he was like, we can just block it off anyway. We don't use it. You don't use it anyway. So mm -hmm. he just blocked it off and put that stand, made that stand and put it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was also going to ask about maybe some like early <coughs> life and in biographical information. Um, where you grew up? Um, Actually, I was born and raised in Chicago. Okay. I moved to Wisconsin in 1986. And I moved here to go to school for radiology. Um, <clears throat> I actually went to school at the VA hospital. They had a program out there then. Um, it was basically um, a two-year program, um, eight hours a day. You didn't get paid. They didn't they didn't give, they used to have stiflings, but they cut those out. They used to give you a stifling to help you out financially, but they had cut net out. So I had to have a part-time job. You had to go from eight to four. Um, and like I said, it was a hospital-based program. Then you went and took your boards for um, radiology. You would pass those and, you know, then you can, you know, get a job. Um, I did odd little jobs. I used to work for... Um, a manufacturer that made the seat covers for the airlines and um, the trains for years, working where I put myself through school and everything. And I've been, like I say, for the last 20-something years, I've been a, I was an x-ray tech for maybe eight years. Then I was a CT tech doing the CAT scans. And for the last 12, 13 years, I've been an MRI tech. Okay. So, yeah. So, the background. No, I have some college experience, but I never got a degree. I went to school. Originally, I thought I wanted to be in accounting. <laughs> but I went to school for about a year and a half and decided, nah. So then I went into radiology. And at that time, we didn't have to have a degree. And as it evolved over the years, um, I say within the last maybe 10 years, someone decided, ooh, we can have these people to pay and make money. So it went from a two-year program to a four-year program. They do come out with a bachelor's degree, but they ain't getting paid no more money than, you know, if it was a two-year program. 
It's just unless they want to do management. And I didn't realize this until lately because we train students at Freighted Hospital that um, the debt that these kids be in when they come out of school for this, I was blown away. Because they was like, I gotta pay student loans. I was like, what student loans? You know, that was me. Because you know, we, was, we were free labor, I would say, and our education was free. So we didn't have to pay for the education. But they did use us, you know, we had to, we, we would be on the floor for so many hours as techs, you know what I'm saying, helping them this and that, you know, so it was kind of an even trade. But I was blown away when I found out how, how these students have to pay for this education. Now, it's like, that's just ridiculous. It really is. No, I mean, it really is. It's like, you know, you in debt before you even make some money, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, wow. And I was like, shoo, well, I got into this in the right time, though. I mean, because when I came out of school, I mean, you know, when I started making money, but then again, when I came out of school, we was making like $4 an hour, that was top pay. They coming out of school now making anywhere between $21, $23 an hour or so. <clears throat> and they was like, who? Well, I would like to get up to what you make. Well, you know, I probably don't make as much more money than they do because not until 15 years ago that they even considered it a profession, you know, and we've had to fight and lobby to get it classified as a profession because they wanted people in these clinics to take x-rays of people's feet, you know, the nurses or the um secretaries or whatever, you know, um, long as the doctor was accredited, you know, under him, you know, you could do that. You didn't have to have any training. Well, you giving people radiation, you know, and you need some training, you know, for that. So, you know, but now it's a big accreditation and, you know, you have to be certified, you have to be registered. So now they made it. So they have to pay these people a nice piece of money to, you know, to do that. So, it's like, yeah, look how many years it took me to get up to twenty-something dollars an hour. <laughs> but that comes with time, like everything. Well, thank you so much for your time. No uh, problem. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? No, I think basically everything you t we touched on the police presence and the stuff. That's the that's one of the biggest things people not wanting to report things or get involved, you know. Um, I think, uh, again, the community should try to be a little more close-knit. But then that comes, again, the difference with the renters versus the homeowners. You know, when we go to the meetings, all the homeowners are, are basically there that lives here. You barely see any of the renters, you know, because they'd like to be done moved the next month. So, yeah. But no, I think that's about it. Again, this has been Joy Huntington with the 2017 Buildings, Landscapes, Cultures Field School. This interview was with Mrs. Miss Miss Diane Tharp at her home at 2638 North 40th Street in Sherman Park, Milwaukee, will be stored at UWM Golden Meyer Library Archives. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you, ladies. That was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I take um, a picture of your dining room and your... Plant? You can take a picture.